Hello and welcome to the program. My name is Michael Finney. Today I am joined by a pair of filmmakers, Keith Lee and Chris Hackett. Gentlemen, please say hello. Hello, everyone. Hey, everybody. Can you tell us a little bit about your backgrounds in film, how you found your way to it, what excites you, anything that you're thinking? I call myself, well, first off, my name is um, Keith Lee. I'm an independent filmmaker from Northern California, a place called Stockton, up by the Bay Area, about 45 minutes from Frisco, maybe to an hour, 30 minutes from Sacramento. It's like a farming town, but um, it's been a lot of migration and a lot of build up here since the tech boom in San Jose. So over the years, a lot of people from the Bay Area came and bought houses because of the housing market was way cheaper and you got way more land here. And I became a filmmaker because um, what happened was I was going to be a animation artist, I thought, when I was a kid growing up. And then... Um, that kind of like turned into filmmaking, but it turned into filmmaking because my bro oldest brother had ended up getting uh, shot and killed. And I was watching TV. I had moved from Stockton to the Bay Area to San Francisco to live with my parents because they didn't want to live in Stockton anymore. They wanted a change of atmosphere after my older brother had got killed, so they moved to San Francisco. And um, I was watching TV, and uh, there was a guy on TV. He had raised like $107,000 to make his first movie, and his name was um, Matty Rich. And he had did a movie called Straight Out of Brooklyn. And it was about a, a Vietnam vet who had came home who was an alcoholic and... Um, he was um, not a well, I say, rounded person after he came back because he probably had PSD and um, he was taking it out on his family and stuff. And um, I was sitting in my mom's um, living room watching TV and he had popped up on TV trying to raise the money. And this was probably over, yes, it definitely was over 20 years ago. And since I had seen that he could tell his stories through his art, then I figured that maybe I could try to tell my stories through my art and help my community and try to stop the violence through filmmaking. I just had this big idea, but I didn't know how to go about starting it. So um, I went to San Francisco Arts in Frisco, interned on movie sets. Um, I um, joined community college out there to make sure I had the script writing format down and um, basically started interning and picking up paper and watching the director and still had the dream of wanting to direct myself. But uh, I was just a PA interning from, well, from a intern to a PA and um, started picking up um, the lingo like um, Apple boxes, C stands, just, just uh, picking up um, all of the lingo or the film lingo and just really becoming immersed in it and um, I got bitten by the bug and fell in love with it and I wanted to make my own movie so I set out to make my own movies and um, I ended up getting a, um, some funding from a, um, a company, a number one rap company in um, Sacramento. They, they wanted me to make a, my first movie called Greedy. They wanted to make it with their artists and kind of like around their artists and their story so I really couldn't like formulated to where I wanted to for my own movie because it was still for another company, but I still tried to make the best I could with the first movie, even though it was from a rap company and they wanted the story to be their story in the way I had to write it for them and stuff, but I still ended up finished in the movie and um, I toured with the movie. I uh, did Cannes, France, San Francisco Film Festival, the Hollywood Black Film Festival, but I didn't know about contracts, so after the movie was done, he put it on Amazon, he put the movie out, he sold a uh, a lot of physicals when it was really physical. So he saw a lot of physicals, but I went back to school because that was a time doing everything. Technology was changing over from mini DV. Well, it was VH, it was <laughs> film, uh, VHS, C, whatever, CD, mini DV. And then now we're on to SD cards. So times had changed. And, um, I jumped back into community college and, um, Learned Final Cut Pro about Adobe After Effects. Um, just just learned about all of the editing stuff because um, it had changed over and it was going to be home based now. And I figured that anybody could uh, go out and make their own movies as long as they just tried. So I call myself a guerrilla filmmaker because I just try to make movies by any means necessary until I could just put out one movie, get the money from that, and flip that, make another movie, and just keep flipping it. But that's how I really like um, got started in the. Um, 
into this um, whole industry of a circus of entertainment, but you got to love it to be in it. And I'm definitely in it for the long haul. And um, that's definitely like somewhat of how I really got started into filmmaking. How about you, Chris? For me, filmmaking was kind of a natural thing. I was uh, I was an actor first, and um, then when there was not enough, I didn't see enough of the parts that I wanted to play. Um, I started getting interested in how to make movies, and that changed everything. You know, wanting to know how to how to write a character that I really like to see and stuff like that, and I started getting really involved in like wanting to do more of that. And then documentaries kind of came naturally after that, and it was. It was just kept going where I felt like my time as an actor helped me direct better. And so that's why I initially just became um, anything involving the behind the camera or behind the scenes, because I also like stage as well. I was a stage actor first and I love the stage. Um, but yeah, and then what keeps me going today is just, you know, the idea that uh, any creator can kind of harness their own power through not just, you know, uh, image generation, but also blockchain, you know, just social media in general. And there's just so many ways for that to happen. And, you know, that's kind of why I stayed, um, is that that's a better outcome than, you know, what I did previously, which was hustle in the, in the film industry, trying to get into the unions and seeing what that did for me. And it really didn't do much because I, you know, didn't, didn't have what it took at the time. But now I can harness anything I want of my creativity. And if anyone likes it, you know, now there's an audience that I could like, you know, get to easily, um, where before that was, that was usually impossible. And, you know, it's good to be able to utilize what I've learned from the industry that I was in, um, not just film, but also nonprofit to help people like just do the things they want to do, because it's the same kind of idea. You're always hunting for money. You're always trying to find innovative ways to make, you know, everything easier and better and stronger. Um, so that's kind of why I stuck around and I'm here and, you know, why I want to continue to like push other people, and myself to like do better in this type of idea where you can harness your, your creativity, your audience and, you know, do a lot with it. Very cool. So Keith, you were based on the West coast, Chris, you were based on the East coast, right? How did you guys find each other, uh, in the digital divide? I say it was meant to be because we crossed paths and it's been unbelievable for me and it's been amazing. But what happened was um, over a year and a half ago, um, I started about two years ago, I, I started off on um, Clubhouse and I switched over to um, Twitter Spaces and they have an organization over there called Film 3 and Film 3 was having four spaces a week. But Chris had um, his own space over there, too, but it still was involved in Film 3, but it was still like his own own space. And I started going to um, Chris's spaces, and it just started clicking with me. Everything he was saying was just, just on point about independent, owning your own rights, filmmaking. And it, it was like this brother really could see the future, but it was like so many other people wasn't hearing him, but I was feeling him. I just wasn't hearing him. I was feeling him. So I knew this brother was really, really amazing at, at, at anything he talked about because he was an actor. He did filmmaking. He was on sets. He he knew about the Apple boxes. He knew about um, editing with, with, with Super 8 to go to 16 and how hard it is to get 35. He's been on all of them sets. So he was speaking the film language language to me. So I started going to his classes. Well, I call them classes because I learned so much in them, but it's to his spaces once a week. So I started going to his spaces once a week and I started really getting involved with what, what he was saying and feeling what he was saying. And it was, it was around the time that they were actually coming out with like AI and stuff. And Chris was talking about AI all the, all the time and Mid Journey had came out and I had jumped on Mid Journey and I was listening to what he was saying and working with the tools of what he was talking, the, tool, the, advanced, the advanced tools he was talking about that was coming out. I started working with them. So I was running this... Um, organization called Cameras Up, Guns Down. And the reason why Cameras Up, Guns Down came because my younger brother had just gotten killed a few years ago, but my older brother, he had got killed before that several years ago. And after my younger brother's funeral, um, his daughters, their twins, they came up to me and they told me, it was like, uncle, they wanted to be a content creators. So I had the idea, well, maybe we can get cameras to these kids in undeserved communities to be content creators or filmmakers and help them learn and have their own company through YouTube and be able to 
sustain and possibly put out some stuff and help them get the tools that they need to be a liability in society instead of instead of an I mean be an asset to society instead of a liability by helping them with content creation, financial literacy, the blockchain, web three, gaming, um, metaverse, avatars, just getting them familiar with the future stuff because that's what you, Chris was talking about, the future and if the future could help grown people and filmmakers and I figured that it could possibly help the youth too. So I got with Chris. Um, I DM'd him. I was I was nervous and stuff, and because uh, I didn't know about the idea, so I DM'd Chris and asked him what did he think about a AI contest, um, an art contest, and he was on board because he really liked about the idea about it. Still, just wasn't for the artists helping them; it was also helping the youth through what we were trying to accomplish. So we held our first AI contest over a year ago, and it it, it turned out to we had like over fifty entries, I think it was, but some of them. Um, he had to like he couldn't use them all, so we 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 did that. And then um, this year, um, it, it was moving so fast. And Chris was talking about AI again, and everything was going from text to video, and talking about how it could possibly help filmmakers. And so I hit my brother again and DM'd him again and asked him what did he think about uh, me and him getting together and and possibly um, doing this this new future thing because he knew he knows the advancement of this technology and if when you want to do was do something anything with anybody you want to have the same goals and missions in mind and also he's an artist so it, it, it worked out so I got got with Chris again and we doing this. Um, Cameras up and guns down, um, AI virtual sin fest. And we um, been holding that. Chris has been holding classes for that for the last over two months, talking about every AI tool there there is possibly is, is and came out and he's giving you the instructions and the know-how and also the hope that you can do it and, and that you don't have to be a big-time filmmaker to create these things. And that's what he's pushing. He's pushing this independence and through the whole AI thing. And it's just been lovely even getting with him. So it's been over a year and a half run. We've been working together. So it's, been, it's really been a blessing. It's really been a blessing. Yeah, for sure. I mean, yeah, so I, I mean, when and when this all started was mostly because me and Keith were traveling around the same people, uh, the Film 3 squad. And, you know, we were both kind of in the same area, kind of talk at the same talk about about in being independent, about being about self-sovereignty of uh, artist self-sovereignty. And I had heard Keith's story a couple of times. And, you know, then there was there started coming more times where I got to interact more and more with him. And it just really made sense because a lot of what we were both thinking is is what we both believe in. And, you know, what we both believe in is something very strongly for everyone to have the ability to create at whatever they want to create, especially the youth. Because, you know, we were once young and we're the ones trying to help the ones that are young because that's what you do. You take what you've learned, you take what you've done, and you hand it down to the next generation to do better with it. And this is why, you know, as I heard what Keith wanted to do, there was just any moment that I could possibly help him. There was That was the moment I took. I was like, yes, I'm, I'm on board. Because this is something I grew up with as a, as a filmmaker. And when I was in Brooklyn... There's uh, the Brooklyn Community Access Television, and they do things like this. And it's one of those big ideas that a lot of people really, you know, get saved from. Because you can do any kind of story. They give you camera equipment and everything. And, you know, you can take classes to learn how to use it. But ultimately, it's the freedom to be able to create that enables people to do more with their lives that they want to do. And so, you know... That's why, as Keith was telling his story more and more in spaces, and you know, and I got to pay attention to his art, uh, to his uh, profile. Like I was like, yeah, you know, I, I definitely feel the same way, and it's, it's just we kind of had that common ground of seeing a lot of shit happen, and you know, wanting to be wanting it to be different, wanting the future to be different. Um, so that's why we got closer and closer, and you know, that's why I, would, you know, no matter what, I'd work with whatever Keith wants to do. I'd, I'd be a hundred percent there for. It. Clubhouse and social audio tools, to me, really pushed the capacity to network and become aware of the technicals. You know, not only the information side of things, but the tools really, really rapidly. I'm, I'm glad that, you know, you guys were able to connect on Twitter spaces. But there was a great period of time, I would say, maybe 
eight months where Clubhouse was just on fire. It was just such a revolution and how quickly it enabled people to find each other and and rapidly develop conversations around topics or communities was just, you know, excellent. Yeah. I mean, spaces for sure. I could easily say I spent a lot of time on it. It actually helped me a lot. That's the reason why the squad was really helpful because I got to hear stories of people doing things that, you know, had real message to it. And I think there, the power was that you get to hear each other, you know, and I think clubhouse, I didn't get to, you know, do as much in, but Keith was definitely more involved in clubhouse and has, you know, better stories than I do. But I, you know, it's one of those things that I could see how powerful of a tool it was to start talking about stuff. And honestly, I would gotten into the AI scene later where Twitter spaces was more where that was happening because I had heard there were, it was happening on clubhouse too, but by the time I got to it, it was like Twitter spaces were the one where everyone was talking about how to use disco and how to make VQ GAN better and how to do better, you know, how to do better animations and everything like that. But, you know, it's, it's an insanely powerful tool. Like there's no, there's no equal to it. And I think everyone now is trying to catch on to it that, you know, like just like we're doing right now, how we're recording this is way easier than it used to be. But, you know, Twitter really was the one that took hold of that as much as Clubhouse started it. You know, Twitter really like emphasized it. And that's why I put my time there. But there's always, you know, there's a great community on Clubhouse for sure. Yeah, Clubhouse, it was great, but on the time when I was on there for like a year, we were um, all figuring out like the whole digital thing that came with the NFT, so we wasn't really on like the AI. I got on the AI when I came over to Twitter, and that's where you was talking about the AI, so it was kind of like, it's. I'm not going to say that Clubhouse was like kind of slower, but it's just... The, when you're talking about advancement and different things, the more futuristic advancements, talk conversations go on on, on Twitter spaces. Yeah, that's fair. I would agree with that currently. Um, you know, I used Clubhouse heavily. I guess it was late 2020 into mid 2021, you know, when I really started to to invest time in there and it helped me because at the time they had access to the Twitter API. So you were able to like very rapidly network and connect with people off of clubhouse where you could do so much more conversationally and with media in the sense of like, you know, group chats, DMing, um, you know, and then being able to see people's stuff on Instagram uh, as opposed to where clubhouse, their development, in that very early period ran a little too slow. And I think Twitter was able to kind of steal the fire from them in that sense, because they weren't able to roll out um, new features fast enough to, to keep up with what the community around social audio really wanted in terms of being able to extend the conversation into links or, uh, you know, reference their material and things like that. Yeah, you're so right, brother. Because now we have video on um, on X, and I mean, it's, it's it's moving exponentially fast. You know, I think the the thing about X that made it, or Twitter that made it, like really powerful, is that Clubhouse is mostly centered around just the conversation. Um, where Twitter has the multimodal kind of idea where, you know, do you want to do a live stream and you're a blue check? Well, there you go. You can do that. Um, do you want to just do audio and, you know, you talk to as many people as possible? Well, that's Twitter spaces. It works perfectly. Um, well, perfectly enough. Um, and then, you know, do you want to just show, you know, you want to just make your own video and show it to people? Totally could do it as well. So, you know, it's the Twitter is Twitter and X, their, their capability is that multimodal. And it's the reason why I think it became a lot stronger because, you know, it's it's one of those things. It's different to talk and theorize about something. It's also good to just be able to show somebody, like sending somebody, uh, 
you know, a model that you want them to download. It's you can do it on you can do it on um, Clubhouse. I don't know how their links work, but you know, you can do it there. It's just not the same as doing it on Twitter, where you can not only just do it to somebody in a DM, but you can also make it part of the conversation. Right. You can put it in the chat for the space. You can make it something that adds to the whole general algo of everything. Where Clubhouse, that's you know, it doesn't really have an algo. It's just whatever you happen to fucking you know be live and find. So let's pivot into the cameras up, guns down, AI film three competition. Where did the idea come from? How has it evolved into what it is? How are things going with it? Yeah. So uh, cameras up, guns down contest is uh, it closed on January 1st. We had over 20 entries. And uh, during the time that we had started the contest to when it ended, it it was a a real roller coaster. I mean, by our, our first deadline, we barely had any entries and, you know, we, we didn't have a lot of support. And then the, the community really came and rallied, rallied hard. Um, we got an anonymous donor to double the top three prizes. Um, we got other donors to come in and, you know, really support the contest and the whole. And, you know, it was it was really it was really epic. Uh, we also got a partner and join who is able to host the contest for us. So the curation is a lot easier and it's, and people who are judges are able to, uh, are able to see all the material and in, in whatever format, you know, is easiest for them. And, uh, then we got five amazing judges. Um, we're doing the reveal very soon. By the time this is posted, everyone will probably know who it is, but, uh, we basically have like a big AI artist. We have a producer that we know that I've already now Sherry McCracken. She's going to be one of the judges. Well, she is one of the judges, um we have uh uh we have um our friend you know uh previously our friend sundog was to be a uh was to be a judge but he sadly passed away but um what's going to be announced this thursday is we have a judge that is somebody very very close to sundog who he would have very much liked to be a judge on this and has already put in their their call i believe we already announced uncanny harry who is another ai video artist and they're gonna they're a judge for us as well and you know if you, anyone who doesn't know his work it's absolutely amazing and uh i believe that's everyone uh javier lovato i don't know if he was announced yet but whatever by the time this comes out you know uh if, it, if it's the first place then let it be uh but he's a producer he produced the uh, movie divinity with Scott Bakula and, you know, a bunch of other really, really interesting um, uh, actors. It was a really, really cool movie. And, uh, and yeah, and so far right now, we're waiting on one last judge's, uh, judge's response, but everything's been really strong. What's what looks like it's going to be the top five is a lot of really strong entries. And what also was good about it is it started conversation. Um, there's a lot of people doing uh, AI video contests, uh, it's Runway themselves, and you know a bunch of others. And it's a it's a thing that you know we didn't. It wasn't happening a lot when we started this, and now it's happening all the time. So we're riding right on this wave. We're probably right on the top of it. And what's kind of cool about it is the outcome. Um, you know the conversations that we've had with uh, with our partner entertainment, who is gonna uh, is gonna put our this product, which is gonna be all five films woven together into one piece. Um, they're looking to get partners in the distribution world to put it on their networks, and you know we share everything with the artists, and we do the we prove the model of what we've been talking about in spaces, and um, that's going really good. So much so that. There's even talk about expanding how AI content makes it onto platforms where, you know, entertainment's really looking at making a a really good home for AI creators to be able to propagate their work. There's a lot more places for our work to go. And I think also the big thing about why Cameras Up, Guns Down and this contest and what we want to do with it uh, is a perfect pairing is because not just you know, using cameras, but also integrating what you capture with those cameras into an AI environment is really a big deal. I think it's a game changer for a lot of people, especially, you know, kids who have really, they love all these stylized looking videos and and they really want to have that be them. They want to express themselves in that way. And I think AI is going to allow for them, whatever they shoot, to be able to do that in a really cool way. Um, so yeah, it's 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 going well. It's really expanded 
a lot of people's minds on what could be done with AI. Um, you know, we're having conversations about, you know, AI documentaries and we're having conversations about how shows could be made and how co uh, consistent characters could be done, how you could make an entire production company, you know, do a run of a certain, you know, of a certain idea. And it's that's the conversation that needs to come out because we need to be making more stuff as a, as a community in general, not just film three, web three, but just as creators in general, because we need to be, we need to find the next big thing. Um, I think the, the space in general and entertainment is right for it to have that next runaway hit. Very cool. Well, are there any other aspects that we have not discussed that you feel are important for listeners to know about? Just um, try to follow Chris, stay up with the tools, because it is the future, what he was talking about. And he's seen the future and it's happening. And he wanted people, to, filmmakers to get out here, enjoy themselves and just have fun and go crazy and just really just enjoy yourself. Don't think of this as something that's hard because picking up C-stands, moving around, running around, all over a set. Now that's hard. And what Chris is talking about is you being able to do it from your phone, being able to do it from your house. I mean, they have cab cut. So what he wants to do is just bring this thing home for everybody and them just to be able to enjoy AI and have fun with it and fall in love with it like he did and, and just create something amazing and create something from your heart. And just even if it's not any, you feel it's not any good, put it out there anyways, because somebody else might like something that you don't make, that you don't like. I mean, so just try to learn about all these AI tools and um, just remember that it is going to be a part of the future and it definitely AI filmmaking is it, here to stay for sure. Yeah, I mean, it's exactly that's exactly the point. You know, the whole idea of this is to really open people up. And that's why I like that a lot of uh, what I think people wouldn't know, if uh, depending on where this is at at this point, is that a lot of the entries were very different and a lot of the tools they were being used is very different. So what I would think is the is, you know, the kind of the short answer of all the spaces we've held on this and everything we've done about it is whatever tool you have available to you, just use it. If it's your cell phone and, you know, you can you just find a, an app that works for you, use it because you never you never know what that could unlock for you. And you never know what tools are available to you start getting into it. And I think that's really what I would want listeners to do is just look out into the vast space of what AI tools are out there and just try and create something. Try whatever it is. Just try. Um, that's the thing I think is going to be the biggest, the biggest up for all artists in the next coming year, 2024, is just keep swinging. Swing for the fences and swing as many times as you possibly can. Um, because that's, that's really what this is about. That's why we want to have these conversations about doing more AI stuff. Because it would be great to have a team come out of this space that is just making good content, making what they want to make, making what somebody else wants to watch, like most importantly, you know, and that's... That's the big, uh, that's the big give is what we're trying to, we're trying to get out of this. Excellent. Love it. Guys, thank you for joining me today. Look forward to the results of the contest. Enjoy the rest of your day. Uh, thank I you for having so. us. And yeah. um, thank you, Chris. And um, rest in peace to Sundog. And um, thank you to the community. And thank you to um, entertainment. And um, thank you to everybody that believes in um, Chris and myself. Thank you. Yeah, got to give a big shout out to Hollywoodland. Got to give a big shout out to uh, Digitally Wired, uh, John uh, John over on Twitter, uh, Streaming Tulpa, um, our our, uh, our anonymous donor. Thank you very much for your contribution. It's, it's going to go to something really great. And, you know, I want to also just recognize Michael. Like, you know, thank you for not just, you know, being involved in the scene, but really, really pushing things forward and, and trying things. And I really want to thank you for having us here and, any any way that we can, you know, give more message to anybody who's listening and, you know, really try and push the idea of their creativity is very important. We're, we're always about it. So glad to be here. We're glad to be back anytime, sir.